Hello, hello, and welcome once again to a Beatles program called Things We Said Today. I'm Ken Michaels, known for my Beatles syndicated radio show called Every Little Thing. This is a weekly show in which we focus on what's going on in the world of the Beatles news-wise, and I'm joined, as I am on all of my shows, with my friendly, sometimes over-friendly co-host... From Beatles friends? Examiner and Monkeys Examiner and Everything Examiner, and probably very soon the Jimmy Nickel Examiner. Oh my! Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Hi, Ken. Hi, everybody. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing fine. It's been a it's been a very interesting week. Let's put it that way. News wise, it has been. News wise, yep. Yeah. Well, on our show today, we have a special guest in our studio. His name is Rex Fowler, and many people know him for being in the band Aztec Two-Step for well over 40 years. And Lord in recent... have mercy, really? That long? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hmm. And you don't show any worse for wear. Well, bless your heart. I look great on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. There's a reason why we're on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and, nice uh, to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, you're actually here with us live at the studio here as we're doing this. Thank you for doing that. Uh, because you have a brand new CD from a group that uh, you started several years ago called the Newtopians. And this is a band that uh, has reinterpreted, I know you like me to use that word, John Lennon songs, Beatles and Solo. And I thought you might want to tell the folks about this because your uh, new CD, which is called Reimagine, you've actually put out two CDs, the yes, Newtopians. We, yes, we have. And it, we started the band in 2010 uh, on what would have been John's 70th birthday. And it wasn't intended to be that it just so it, co it was just coincidental uh we made the record uh i made the record with my friend tom dean who was a, in a band called devon square he they were on a, atlantic signed by Amon erdogan back in the early 90s and uh, i admired the, his work very much and asked him to partner with me on it i liked his voice i liked the way he produced records and uh, i thought he'd be a perfect match for this and he kind of came into it a little reluctant, a little kicking and screaming, because after all, we're talking about the Beatle canon, John's solo years as well. But this is the bar was set as high as it could possibly be set in terms mm. of pop, um, pop music, iconic uh, band and, and artist. And, but once we started doing it, uh, it, it felt good. And we made the record, and then we decided to put together a group and go out and, 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 and perform these songs. And that's, that's how it started. Yeah, and Rex has actually been on my show a couple of times, and Steve has interviewed him as well. And i got to tell you, Rex, I know I've told you this before, one of the things that I like most about this music is that it's your own interpretation, that it's your own arrangements of John songs. Um, I know you don't like to use the word tribute. The T you, word. You try to stay away from that, because you don't try to copy the Beatles. No. You try to do your own take on it. We do, and um, we don't want to look like them we're not wearing the wigs we're not you know stay home if you want to see the the sergeant pepper at costumes uh we're just going out uh and just trying to honor this amazing music by the most amazing songwriter of my lifetime hmm. and and i have to say that you know i mean you hear i mean there's so many cds put out that cover the beatles and using various styles and various ideas and the thing that hit me with you know, with the Newtopians, when I first heard it, was how fresh it sounded. It really is nice to listen to, and it's you know extremely enjoyable. It's it it doesn't sound gimmicky. It's really natural and, and really musical, and and for that you ought to be commended, Rex. It's really nice. No, that's very kind. Thank you. Well, you know, when you think about it, the Beatles sequestered in their hotel rooms, or you know, sitting on uh, Aunt Mimi's, you know. Uh, out in the parlor or up in John's <laughs> bedroom, you know, with the doors closed, they were playing acoustic instruments. They were playing acoustic guitars. That's what mm -hmm. that's what they played, and so it, it was a perfectly natural thing for us. Who, you know, my band is and Tom's band is a folk rock band. We came from you know from that great tree that that uh, that you could start. Who knows? You could start with Pete Seeger and you know, and and, and those guys, mm -hmm. and then Bob Dylan, of course, and and all the branches that, that came off of that, and it, it was a perfectly natural thing to do, and we were just doing what we do best, which is be ourselves, singing these songs like we did, you know, when we were kids, learning how to play the guitar. 
Right. Now, one of the things uh, that I like most, and, and I, I know I've told you this before, is that the Beatles, you really, over the years, begin to realize that, as George Martin has said, everything starts with the song. The Beatles songs were so strong that they lend themselves to so many different interpretations and different genres. And when I listen to your arrangements of these songs, I love the instrumentation. And by the way, the production is just so crystal clear. I mean, who produced the Well, the you'll CDs? see my name on there, but we'll give Tom D. most of the credit. He, he uh, like I said, uh, I, I wanted him in the band because I knew he could engineer and produce exquisitely. He, right. he did a solo album of mine called Gettysburg, if you're anybody out there want to run, run out and, and uh, get on our website, Aztec Two Steps website, website and, and, and give it a listen. But I knew he was just right for this. And uh, so Tom gets a lion's share of the credit for this. Really? Stellar production all around. Uh, but getting back to what I was saying about arrangements, you use an acoustic approach, but then you also use instrumentation like harmonicas. Not uh, just harmonica, chromatic harmonica. Although <laughs> come to, uh, I, I stand to be corrected because on the first record we did use uh, we did use a, a, a blues oriented uh, harmonica um, on uh, one of the songs. Rob uh, uh, Paparozzi, one of the great blues harmonica players uh, in our generation, played the uh, regular blues harp. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'll cry instead. Okay. Yeah. And anyway, you were telling me before that the chromatic harmonica is what Stevie Wonder it's, plays. Yes. And when you hear the songs that have it, it does sound like Stevie's playing. Yeah, well, uh, we can work it out. Hello, nice version, right? A nice, uh -huh. uh, and uh, the, uh, yeah, uh, Gary Schreiner was just the guest soloist, asked by Sting to back up Sir Elton John at, at the uh, Rainforest in Carnegie Hall in February of this year. And uh, he is one of the elite chromatic harmonica players. He also plays incredible accordion, and he's a great piano player. And he's a big, big part of our band. It mm -hmm. gives us a very distinctive sound. I, I was just going to say that, because you use the accordion, you use the mandolin. It's, you know, it's all this instrumentation that makes it sound so full and rich and, and uh, you know, adds more life to these songs. It's, well, uh, if people want to check, uh, hear what we're talking about, in this case... Um, I think uh, If I Fell would be a good representation because it does feature Gary on chromatic, uh, much like uh, uh, and, and our, our, our cellist Jordan Jantz uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and much like uh, Julia did on the first album where we really wanted to highlight those, instrument, those instruments and more, come from it more from an instrumental uh, uh, point of view as opposed to just the singing. Great. Well, there is singing on... On, on both of those songs that I mentioned, If I Fell and Julia, but we feature, it's featured instrumentation. Right. Okay. Not only that, you have, this is not a four-piece group. You have all together how many people? There are seven musicians and um, our guest vocalist, Maggie Coffin, who is a uh, daughter of Robbie Coffin, who's our multi-guitar uh, player, lead guitar player. But she's a sophomore in high school, Gardner, Maine, an extraordinary talent, and she has the lead on two songs in this uh, on this record, uh, this record is called Lennon Reimagined, uh, Dear Prudence and Revolution. And she worked up some arrangements of her own on these, which are pretty extraordinary. Yes, yeah, so this, is, this is another thing that makes it unique is the fact that you have male and female vocalists singing lead in, in the band. We do. Uh, Alana McDonald, who also is a member of Devon Square, is, in my opinion, one of the elite vocalists, one of the best vocalists of her generation in, 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 the, in, a, in the folk rock genre. Uh, pop folk rock genre and she's also um, on this record um, singing uh, uh, just a, a beautiful cool version of beautiful boy and um, she does a little singing on if, if uh, uh, shares lead vocals uh, with me uh, on um, and your bird can sing and she also does the introduction vocal on if I fell you know, that lovely intro that John sang if I fell in love with you, <laughs> would you promise? Don't, oh, don't, never mind. I don't want to scare people. <laughs> let, me, let me ask a question about the, about the two CDs, Rex. When yes. you, did you change focus between the first and second CD? Did you, after you did the first CD, did you make any change in direction for the second one, or did, are they both basic, basically 
along the same lines? They're along the same lines, but uh, it's a good question because um, Tommy and I went in and layered the first album pretty much from the ground floor up. You know, it was uh, we started with the guitars, uh, then the vocals, and then we started adding instruments. And this record uh, on nine of the thirteen compositions, uh, we went in the studio with our touring band. Uh, and uh, I, you really get the per more of the personality of the group on this record, even though they're all on the f on the first record as well. But they w it wasn't where we went in, sat around and did performances live to you know to uh, to tape. So that's what you hear a lot more of the personality of the group. It's pretty, I think uh, dis you can distinguish it that way. But in terms of the actual instrumentation, pretty much the same. Now, we should point out that you have a website, which is thenewtopians.com, and if people want to check out this music, they can always stream it. Yes, they can. Uh, and, and if people are interested, uh, I believe just recently it was the 40th anniversary of the birth of the uh, faux nation or the uh, fictitious nation called Newtopia. Mm -hmm. And it was what John and Yoko did when they were, with their sense of humor and their sense of... Uh, commitment for so social change and uh, activism. They started this uh, country in order to fight deportation and to bring awareness to the Vietnam War and, and to, the, to the peace movement that was also going on in general back in, the, in, in those days. And uh, we wanted to <coughs> use a name that wasn't smacking of tribute bands, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that would have some political and social rele relevancy as well as honoring the great, amazing music. I'm surprised that you haven't covered the Newtopia National Anthem. <laughs> well, it's really hard to duplicate that one. It is. It's a, it's a quiet song. <laughs> it's it, as it, quiet it as it can be. It definitely is. <laughs> um, Rex, you, in, in, the, um, in the information about uh, the second CD, you mentioned that Yoko actually had contact with you guys about the name yes and I'm, I'm, and I'm also curious if at some point because you've had a long history musical history if you ever personally had any contact with John no I did not it was uh, other than I saw him from afar during a rehearsal uh, with Elephant's Memory at, at what was the old uh, Fillmore East well so you did have contact with him in, but, in a way yes it, but, but not uh, it was always uh, I had always hoped to have um met John and I had a, the perfect story which I know he would have loved. I was uh, in I was in um, Bloomingdale's in 1975 on a Saturday morning picking out a tie for a brand new black velvet suit that I had bought. I had always wanted a black velvet suit. We just got an advance from RCA Records and I was determined to go in and do that. So uh, I had never been to Bloomingdale's at that point even though I'd lived in Manhattan for a couple of years then. And there it is a very Bustly, bustly, uh, you know, uh, busy uh, ground floor in Bloomingdale's, and I'm s sitting there at the, standing there at the tie department with an elderly couple, and all of a sudden it got very quiet, and like Moses parting the Red Sea, in through the, you know, this uh, little opening that had happened, was John Lennon, and I think his pal Elliot Mintz, and um, as the people folded in behind him as they kept moving. I heard the, the, the gentleman ask the lady that, you know, in the tie department, who was that? And without blinking, she said, that was Yoko Ono's husband. <laughs> and he went, oh, and that was it. No, that, that was, well, the guy from the Beatles, Yoko's <laughs> husband, John Lennon. It was just Yoko Ono's husband. And I know John would have loved that story because, you know, he, he, at, at, at that point he had already gotten back with, uh, you know, together, and, you know... That's, it, that's really something. And I know he yeah, would love it. Yeah, that's a great story. Yeah. But, you know what, uh, say what you want. Uh, she was very important to his uh, career, uh, you know, I think uh, giving him the courage to do what was inevitable anyway, which was go on his own and, you know, and and do that. So... I agree with you. We're very supportive of Yoko. <laughs> and the other, and the other thing about Yoko, getting back to the name and everything, we we affiliate ourselves. We affiliate ourselves with Why Hunger, and that's how the Lennon Estate, quote unquote, heard about us. Because when we were going to do a show with Why Hunger, uh, who Yoko backs 
tremendously right. gives mm-hmm. a lot of support to. Uh, they had to, out of respect, run our name by the uh, you know the estate. And our name back then, our original name was the John Lennon uh, Song Project, which of course said exactly what we wanted to say. Right. But it was very naive of us to think that we could just run down the road with with this you know the the quote unquote brand. And so when we were asked to please change our name in a in a in, in a and in a not immediately they gave us time to you know we, we could continue selling the record we could continue uh with the shows that we had on the books as the john lennon song project but so not to, we didn't want to ruffle the feathers and and we didn't want as i said before to call ourselves the working class heroes or something like that right we so we thought okay we'll call ourselves the new utopians because of Newtopia, but we didn't want to like then, even use that. You know, we didn't want to go that close to to something that I know was near and dear to her. Hmm. So when once again they presented the name to her through Why Hunger, she said to the the lawyer this time, you know, who we always communicated with, said instead of the estate, she said he said, well, Yoko said, why don't you just call yourselves the Newtopians, and <laughs> that's what we wanted to call ourselves anyway. Uh, you know mm. that would, would would have been our second choice for her name. Yeah, and uh, so I asked if we could say that Yoko suggested it, and th- he said by all means, after getting her permission. So, right. Yeah. You've never That's met it. her. Yeah. No, yeah. I, ha- I haven't. I I I really hope to one day. You know, I know that she was given the first album, but I also know that I've heard that you know she doesn't. Um, you know, it's hard for her to even listen to to the Beatles and John's solo stuff because it's very painful for her still. Right. And I oh, totally sure. understand that. So mm-hmm. uh, whether she's heard it or not, I don't know. But um, I think if she heard us live, I think she really would get it and be very happy that we're doing what we're doing. I think so too. One of the things that I find very unique on both these CDs and in your live act is that you do a lot of medleys. You work two songs together and <laughs> they just work together so well. They're just kind of seamless. Thank you. Um, especially in the case of on your first album, I Call Your Name with um, You Can't Do That. It's like they're, yeah. they're, you, you might have thought that it was just one song when it was written. Yeah. So is there any thought put into this when, you, when you're when you creating um, these new recordings? Or is it just something spontaneous that, that comes to mind? or? Or what? Well, the first one was the 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 f- number f- the first song on there, which was uh, "I'll Get You Into Imagine," and right. of course, "I'll Get You Imagine." I'm in love with you, and something went off a little. In my you know, little light bulb went off, thinking, you know, th- this was, would be one of the things that would make what what I had hoped to to do unique, uh, and combining some songs. I was inspired to a certain extent from "Love." the yeah. uh, masterful Cirque du Soleil show that uh, features a lot of the instrumentation, and I mean, a lot of the music um, of the Beatles. And they had done some mashups, you know, with their, with the, for that show. Which, by the way, if you haven't been there, and who care? I don't care what you think about Vegas, <laughs> go and see this show. It is absolutely spectacular. But, um, so th- that was the first song that I, I had... Uh, worked up uh, and played for Tom, and um, he came back the next next week with uh, I call come together and, oh. come together and I am the walrus. Okay. And at that point, we both looked at each other and said, "You know what? This is going to work. Let's go forward. Let's just finish up and see what we can come up with here." And we ended up doing seven medleys on the first album, and they're not just medleys in the traditional sense of the word where. You begin with one song and end with another. We really do weave them together so that they become one right. one conceptual piece of music, even though there's two songs involved. Yeah. And um, we get great reactions. You can hear the gasps almost, I mean literally, in concert when we switch gears from one song to the next because some of them are very iconic, you know, so... They're just, you know, for instance, uh, Tomorrow Never Knows into Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And mm. you got to hide your love away with Norwegian Wood. Uh, you can't do that. I call your name. Uh, the word, uh, uh, the word was, excuse me, a uh, song that I really, uh, uh, not the song, but uh, I wanted to get that, the classic middle eight from We Can Work It Out, which is a great Paul McCartney song. But Lennon's, you know, classic middle eight, Life is Very Short. So, 
uh, I wanted to uh, make sure we got that in, and we put it with the word, which was a Lennon, you know, mostly a Lennon song. Right. And uh, so th that's a good example of uh, off the first album. The second album, uh, one of the things that I'm <laughs> really uh, uh, most proud of was putting "Love" and "All My Love" together. Two of John's great. That's beautiful. one of my favorites. Yeah, and of course Yoko wrote, uh, co-wrote "All My Love," which I didn't realize at the time. I, I, we didn't credit her, so my apologies, Shoko. It will be on the next pressing. We'll, we'll, we'll credit you for that. But um, and then, Again, uh, did you think of those two songs together? Or was just yeah, the theme I'm, of love. I'm not answering your question very well. <laughs> There's a lot of thought that goes into them, and uh, but I have to say, uh, and I think that for the most part, I'm the one who does those kinds of you know, uh, mostly my idea is to do that. I have a, a knack for it for some reason. Uh, Tom's really great at taking a, a song, for instance, like You're Gonna Lose That Girl, and just making it so Tom Dean and mm. so singer-songwriter and so contemporary. Right. He does that on a number of songs that he sings. Rain is another good example of the first album, where it, you know, he takes this you know, psychedelic, you know, the quintessential psychedelic song that inspired Revolution uh, as well as you know, the seminal Sgt. Pepper album and the entire, and the entire uh, psychedelic era of, of rock, you know, of rock back in the in, in the late seventies. Hmm. That right. that that song was so in, in, in important to the whole sound of, of those that are things that I just mentioned, and you know, John, and Tommy takes it and it turns it into this incredible, you know, contemporary love song. Hmm. Yeah, I love your take on um, No Reply. Yeah, I've been playing that song. There's a real song. dark feeling to it. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a dark song anyway, really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm very, I, I, I've been playing that song for a long time, and I do a little thing at the end there that's very me and not Beatles. But, uh, it, gosh, it's a lot of fun to sing and, and perform. And people, you know, we usually start, we do two, two sets, we usually start the second set with it. And it's a really cool way to get back in this in the groove again real quick and, and just capture that thing that with Lennon was so you know that the dark side of Lennon you know that uh, I, right. I think I think Steve had used the word uh, earlier when we were talking uh, I'm not on air but uh, deprecate self-deprecating you know he wrote songs about being a loser and you know being shot down and 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 you know not that many songwriters are writing about that most men were writing about conquering right they're conquering but not being uh vulnerable you know help is another great example sure where he really laid it all out that you know he was vulnerable and um but he did it with such panache and you know originality and coolness that yeah you've got to hide your love away yeah that yeah. kind of thing. are you planning are you planning to do another one uh rex oh i hope so you know there I'd say there's a good three or four more albums, you know, at least, uh, you know, I think it's really, it's endless. You could go on and on. Uh, they're not easy. They're not easy to make. They take a lot of time. They're very expensive. Mm. <laughs> you know, we have this amazing band, but you know, there's, there's the eight people in the studio and they're coming from all over New England and New York and Connecticut. And it's difficult to coordinate schedules, I bet. That, right. yeah. And we were fortunate to have a Kickstarter campaign that helped us with this album. And, uh, but, and that was right in the teeth of Hurricane Sandy, too. And we lost uh, a lot of uh, potential backers because of that, because people's uh, power was out for two weeks in some places. And even today, I think some of, some of those homes that were, even the ones that weren't totally destroyed still are, have areas that, you know, they're still not getting there cable and some of the electrical so it definitely that definitely hurts but we we made our our goal and uh we were able to finish this record manufacture it because you know we you also pay for the songs you know and we had on right there are 13 songs on this uh but there are um 16 that we had to pay for because we did three three medleys on this album as well yeah. so you know it's expensive i'm not boohooing but it's it's an honor to do the music and who knows maybe Someday uh, people will hear Newtopians and they'll go, oh, yeah, that's the group that not only performs John Lennon songs but makes really cool records, mm -hmm. you know, uh, as well. You want to just quickly, because I really love the song, i got to bring it up. You, you wrote yourself a John Lennon tribute song called Johnny's an Angel, which is on the first Newtopian CD. Can you just say how that song came about? 
Yes, um, it happened. John was killed December 8th on a Monday night, uh, 1980. I shouldn't say killed because he was murdered. And uh, right. uh, by, you know, by a, a, a lunatic who could had access to uh, buy a handgun, n- no problem, which, you know, a million, more than a million deaths since John Lennon's uh, assassination, murder, whatever you want to call it. And uh, still no meaningful legislation to curb, you know, gun violence in this country in spite of all of the horrible things that have happened in this past year. Nevertheless, uh, it was a week. I had a rare weekend off following that Monday, and I was in a total depression like the rest of the world was. And going into the following weekend, uh, I noticed that my calluses had basically disappeared, and I thought, well, I better pick up my guitar. I got some gigs this weekend. Let me, let me just pick up the guitar and play a little. And you've heard this people talk about songs writing themselves or just pouring out, and I had no intention. How do you write about something like that? It's impossible, at least from my perspective. Right. right? You know, so um, I started playing some chords, and all of a sudden I started singing some words, and in 20 minutes I wrote this song called um, Johnny, Johnny's an Angel. And, of course, it was, you know, that, that hideous, awful song, Johnny Angel, <laughs> which Lennon probably right. would have <laughs> hated, you know. Johnny Angel, <laughs> I love it. You know, it's a, it would have smacked a little bit of Paulie, you know, some of his more, uh, you know, and, and as Paul had said himself, some of his sappy love songs that he wrote for his gorgeous, beautiful wife, right. and which many people love and I love as well. But, you know, it was one of those awful 60s songs from the early 60s that I I had to take, uh, you know, the, the Johnny, Johnny's an angel. I had to take Johnny Angel, you know, and, and re- <laughs> re- rework it a little bit. I think I made it a, a better song <laughs> than the original, you know. I mean, I didn't use any of the melody or anything. I just grabbed that phrase and turned it around a little right. bit. Right. Well, I think it's one of the best Lennon tributes out there. I really do. Thank you very much. That's all. We have just about run out of time here. We want to make sure that uh, we say to our listeners that Rex has been kind enough. He gave us a couple of Newtopians tote bags with the latest CD, which is called Reimagined. And we should say the first CD is called Imagined, if you want to pick up both. And also in the tote bag is a Newtopian sticker. And we have two of them to give away. And the way to win, we'll take two random uh, listeners of ours to write, who write to us at our email address which is things we said today radio show at gmail.com and uh, two of our listeners will win that whole package which by the way Rex has autographed the Tom, CDs Tommy too. and I uh, uh, both auto- well uh, yeah Tommy and I both have autographed uh, those okay isn't that wild I'm wonderful thank you Rex <laughs> and by the way um, the album is called Lennon Reimagined uh, and the first one is uh, Imagined celebrating the songs of John Lennon. Because, you know, if we don't say his name, it's, it's going to be hard for people to know what we're talking about. <laughs> right. Yeah. And you can always find out more about the group at thenewtopians.com. You can find out all the dates of where they're playing yes. right on the website. Yes. You've got, you've got a bunch of dates coming up uh, this summer. Yeah, we're doing some shows in the Berkshires, uh, at Gut- the Guthrie Center, and uh, we've got some festivals that we're doing up in Maine and New Hampshire and... You know, we're getting the word out. We've been we've been asked to come out to California, which we hope to do in Carmel, uh, maybe in, in oh good thirteen. That's, still, that's, only, that's only a couple hours away from me. Oh yeah, great! You guys, yeah. If you do that, let me definitely let me know. Yeah, and we've been you know we've been down to Florida two or three times. It's some wonderful venues down there, the Kravis Center and this and this and the Sunrise. We're getting the word out slowly but surely, you know, and uh, I hope that people will take a minute and and at, at least str- go out and, and you can. You can stream some of the songs uh, on the on our website. You know, you can hear what, uh, get an idea of what they sound like, and uh, just not that John needs it, but you know, we're just we're just keeping the love alive and and the respect. You know, uh, we're here, we're able to do it. He's not, and uh, that's all we want to do is just honor the amazing artist. And we was. appreciate the the love and the passion that you have in the music, and you are in your own way keeping the music alive by doing this. And it's very distinctive and very earnest, and uh, you know, like I said earlier, unlike you know many tributes that you know are kind of out there and you just kind of pa- you know you just kind of hear them and go, okay, this is re- you know this is really nice. This is a really re- the mm-hmm. the it's really nice stuff, and it's and I I personally recommend it. And I think I know Ken does too. So 
Yeah. Uh, that means the world to, to me, and I know that the whole band will appreciate it. Thank you so much. And also, uh, on my own website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com, I'll be giving away these prizes as well. Yes, indeed. So, uh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you got several chances to win. Great. So, for things we said today, I'm Ken Michaels saying thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Rex Fowler from the Newtopians, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>